Hello guys, it's me Nabil uh, with Auto Repair Champs. Um, working on a 2013 BMW X1 X Drive, which is all wheel drive 28i. And today we are going to change the front differential. Uh, this differential is making a a whining noise kind of like a wheel bearing noise and we are going to replace this unit right here this unit is uh, where the front drive shaft connects to and I'm going to show you what it looks like that's where the axle goes into and this um, unit is being held with four bolts from the front not from the uh, not the front of the vehicle but more like a front of this uh, differential and then one coming from the back right here that's being held it goes from the back right here so one two three four from the front of it and then one in the back and I'll show you the one in the back where it's located So this is the one, so th these are the front, one, two, and then up there is three, four, and then that's the one on the front. They're all the same size. And uh, let me see what size they are. So they're size 16, okay? Well, just keep in mind, this is not going to fit here. So you're going to need to get like either a grain, uh, gear wrench or something that fits into this spot here or maybe just a regular wrench because uh, the this one won't fit. Now, I just got to tell you, we're not going to start removing those bolts yet. The first thing what we need to do, as you can see, the axle is going through it. So we need to uh, remove the axle. And I'll show you in a little more details on how to remove this stuff here and how to get to the axle. Um, the easiest way to remove the axle on this one is probably going to be uh, just removing this bolt here and removing the, um, the shocks on the top where you don't actually have to disconnect and remove any of the ball joints or outer tie rods or any of that stuff right here so all you have to do is just disconnect this tilt this remove the axle uh, and then you should be able to uh, pull that axle from there so let's get it started okay so to remove the axle I use size 17 I don't know you can't read the number on this but this is size 17 and we're gonna go ahead and uh, start removing this here with the gun So, we're just having a hard time removing that bolt. We're gonna get our tray bar, something like this. So because this wheel is moving um, 
it's going to be really hard for us to to remove this nut what we're going to do is we're going to put the rim back We are going to get this room back here and uh, we'll just pop this cap so we can reach to the nut. So let's uh, okay so we put the rim back and now let's see And then after that, we actually lowered the car. I'm gonna actually try that one more time with the gun and see what happens. That just came out. So that's, might as well just show you what this looks like. And that's what this looks like. Looks like there's an O-ring and a little spring. And like I said, this is a size 16. I'm sorry, size 17. Okay. So we'll put this aside and we'll lift the car, remove the rim and uh, resume working on it. So next thing we need to remove is this nut on this side and there is a big bolt on this side to remove the, sh uh, the shock and they both size 18. So let's go ahead and remove that. So both of them are size 18. So, one thing I was going to mention is it might be a good idea to hold the other side with like some kind of gear wrench, size 18. So this is being held with the gear wrench size 18 from here and I'm going to use my air gun to remove this from the other side. So because once you start removing this it may start spinning. I'm going to go ahead and remove this um, with an air gun. Let's see. If I can get some lights for you guys to see. I'll go ahead and keep this bolt in for a sec. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually knock on this. I'm going to actually knock on this so it comes out of here. Remove this light. There you go. 
This bolt start coming out. All right. Okay, so as I mentioned, this bolt is off, um, but in order, well, before I get to that, so there's a couple of things that you need to remove from here. These two cables are being hung by this metal piece, the bracket. And then I did remove this bracket that was here uh, holding the brake line. And then uh, you need to remove the sway bar link from one side only if the, I do it normally from the bottom. Um, and then the bottom here is size 16 and 17. So I'm gonna, uh, that's what I'm gonna use, 16 and 17. I believe 16 is the outside one. Yep. And then 17 is the inside. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, remove this uh, sway bar link. So I did loosen up the bolt for the sway bar links here. And what I normally like to do, I like to remove this and put the bolt back in. I don't like bolts throwing here and there and then some people are not very organized and they start losing them. So I just put it back here and just keep it in here. Uh, now this is loose, that's... Uh, that's uh, right there so after removing the sway bar link um, now we need to kind of hit this with something to get this long screw out and there's a couple of ways actually to get it out Make sure you don't hit this with a hammer. Don't hit this with a hammer because you're gonna ruin the threads and then your problem is gonna get, it's gonna start getting uglier. You can either use something like a Phillips screwdriver and just kinda put it in the middle here and just hit it, hit it with, or you can bring your uh, pre bar or, or kind of like something like this here. And then you can either start, you know, using your muscles here and just get this nut out. Now it's, see it's, it's coming out. I just gotta use the perfect angle here to get this whole thing out sorry guys I'm I got I'm working with one one hand here um, I'm using the camera on the other hand but yeah um, you guys get the point I'm gonna actually use my other hand to uh, hit it with a hammer and get it out. So now the nut is out to get the strut off. But because the rust and everything else, I'm gonna use something like this here and kinda start squeezing this to make it a little loose. Actually, I'm gonna get a larger one So as I mentioned folks, the next thing we need to do is we need to open this up a little bit so we can remove the strut. Okay. It's a little loose now and let's uh, lower the vehicle and see if we can uh, remove that uh, 
spindle. Okay, so the strut have been lowered. Now we need to do sure we don't break any of these cables so just get them loose and this should be out that's it for the that's it for the strut Let's see if we can just yeah, there you go. And now we should be able to remove this axle. So we'll go ahead and remove it. I just wanted to show you how you remove this axle actually. Um, I don't you know some people start pulling on these axles. That is not the proper way of doing this. Um, what do you actually need to do? Bring something like this here. And what you need to do, come down and you can either start twisting this or you can just hit it with a hammer lightly to push it out. So I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can use my strength here too. I'll just go ahead and hit it with the hammers lightly to get it out. Okay, so it should be loose now. And let's go ahead and get it out. You should be able to just slide it out just like that. Notice how you guys, um, I did not have to remove any of the lower um, spindle attachments like ball joints or outer and any of that stuff. All I did is just remove the bolt for the axle, the bolt for the strut, and the sway bar link to get, just to give me a little leverage, a little room to work with. And now, uh, let's go ahead and work on the um, differential. Just make sure, guys, when you remove that axle, it's going to start dripping oil. Uh, transfer case oil. Um, this oil as actually looks like uh, it's cleaned. It's clean, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, remove that oil fluid inside and use a uh, new fluid. Okay, so while this is dripping here, um, Next step is going to be to remove the drive shaft. And what I use is just size 10. There's four of them. Four right here. And four right here. I'll go ahead and remove them and I'll be right back. So guys, before we start removing the drive shaft, I just want to say is we know this is dripping here and what I would actually recommend is 
you actually remove this drain plug um, so you can drain the fluid so this doesn't keep draining doesn't keep dripping while you're working so I'm gonna go ahead and remove this and uh, I'll remove the oil all right I'll be right back to remove that drain uh, plug you're gonna need to use size 14 um, my camera with the uh, right there size 14 and that's what this looks like all right okay so drain the fluid from the transfer case and remove the four bolts on the front of the drive shaft I'm actually not gonna remove the rear ones yet I'm gonna actually wait on those see I might be able to just uh, squeeze the transfer case in there without um, removing the backside we'll see how it goes uh, so right now I'm gonna start removing those uh, nuts um, size 16 and I'll get my gear wrench for this one okay guys so I removed that one the further down right there no problem these two one on this side and one on this side can't be removed until you have to support the engine with something like this here to lift the engine raise up the engine a little bit so you can pull this from the top of the frame and then once you pull that from the top of the frame then you can start pulling this out and then you can start unscrewing this unscrewing this on this left on the, the, the one on the left side so you need to jack, get a jack like this and you know notice how I start raising this jack see how this is going up and then once See a little, little more. Now this should be good right there. See, I'm able to remove this bolt. And then hold on to this, because once you start removing the transfer case, then you'll get more room and then you start unscrewing this. And then I remove this one on this side. Now I gotta lower this jack a little bit, okay. And now I can remove this one on on the side, and then I'll worry about the top ones in a minute. Okay, yeah, now that we're get it's getting more interesting and yeah, a little more fun with this. So the top bolts right there. So that's one of them on the right side and then the other side is right there. So let's go ahead and get an extension and swivels and see if we can uh, figure out a couple of connections that uh, could make us get to that uh, area. Okay, so for the one on the right side, right there, this is the combination that I used. Long socket, swivel connector, and an extension. And let me show you how it just fits there perfectly
There you go. See, this is just perfect. I'm gonna go ahead and remove that bolt and I'll be right back. Okay guys, for the bolt on the front on the left side, I used a short socket, swivel, and an extension. You just gotta have to be patient and careful. It's uh, it can it's a little tricky on how to get to that spot, but just be patient and do it right, and uh, it should uh, come out just fine. So guys, initially I said I'm gonna remove the four bolts on the drive shaft on the front and keep the ones in the back. I actually decided to remove those because this transfer case starts. It's moving now, but you know, I just want to give myself a little room. I mean, I can hang this aside and get this removed, but I, I just want to give myself a little more room. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna remove this. Okay, so remember guys, I told you about this bolt that I can't get out. So what I did, I just kind of stuck something like this in the middle here and twisted it. Now I get more space for this to come out. As you can see, I can start unscrewing this and I got more space. So you actually needed to get the ones on the front and this one um, and this one from the front before you actually can remove this. And this one is short, not like the other ones on the front, on the other side, they're long. And I'll show what they look like. So that's the set right there. Now it's gonna be the fun part of uh, removing this uh, transfer case. So guys, unfortunately, I got a fun one for you. Um, get my flashlight and show you what's going on. I can't get this transfer case out before I remove the axle on the right side. This axle is going actually all the way here and it's going inside this transfer case. Long story short, we need to do the same exact thing we did on this end on the right side and remove this axle. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm not, I'm not gonna record removing the axle on the right side because it's pretty much the same concept with the exception of this bracket that need to be removed and um, yeah so yeah this bracket is the only difference on the on the side all right I'm gonna go ahead and remove that and uh, I'll get back to you shortly when I'm ready to remove the transfer case. Okay guys, so I did remove uh, the axle on the passenger side and there's four bolts for this bracket. Right here. Um, I did remove them and I did move the, or, or slid the axle to the right side a little bit and that gave me more room and then now this carrier case or carrier assembly or differential or whatever you want to call it is i know i've called the transfer case earlier but it's not a transfer case. This is the, for the front differential. Uh, transfer case is normally attached to the transmissions right here. Um, but yeah, um, this is the courier assembly. So I'm, I'm not able to actually get this out. Long story short, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna lower the vehicle and I'm gonna remove the engine mount that's right there and then um, 
support the engine from the bottom and see if that gives me more room to slide this down. So let's give it a try and see what happens. So I did lower the vehicle and then I want to show you where that size uh, 16 nut is for the engine mount on the driver's side. So it's right there. You guys see that socket? It's on the top of the nut for the engine mount on the driver's side. I'm gonna go ahead and remove that so I can support the engine from the bottom and I can raise it a little bit to give me more room to remove that uh, carrier assembly. So I'll uh, do that and I'll be right back. All right, so I'm back guys. Um, so as I mentioned, um, I've got the stand to support the engine here and I did remove the bolt for the engine mount on the top of the engine bay and now I'm going to try to lift this up and see if we can get that uh, uh, carrier assembly out by uh, dropping it down all right so let's see um, as I start lifting the uh, engine I'm gonna try to drop this in and see what happens So this is uh, harder than I expected. It's really tight in here, guys. look at this from the back and see what I can see so I'm actually thinking about completely removing that engine mount um, let me actually keep the light in here and see if I can kind of see what's going on on this end. Oh, this is really tight. Not much room to work with. Alright, I'm gonna think about this for a couple of minutes and I'll be right back. So, uh, there's just no way to get this out this way, even if you lift the engine up with the engine mount off. So, save yourself some time and hassle. Uh, it is time to drop down the engine cradle. Uh, I'm gonna loosen up this bolt, I'm gonna start from this end here. But before you drop down the engine cradle, you need to remove this cover to get to the bolt, they're size eight. So, um, there's one here, one there, so there's two of them. Now we can see the bolt for the engine cradle right here. Um, actually, yeah, 
Let's see what size this is. Um, I'm gonna start with 18. So I did remove the, actually I should say, I loosened up this screw for the engine mount on the left driver side. And then I'm gonna, I did loosen up the passenger side as well, right here. And then I'm gonna loosen up this one right here for the driver side as well. And that will give us a little more room to work with. I'll be right back. All right, so guys, um, this is very painful to get the um, carrier assembly out of here. And we've tried a couple of things. I wasn't able to get it out, but I think I may have figured out a way to get this out without removing the oil pan and without removing the engine cradle or drop in the engine cradle and basically it's it's very simple uh, it took me a while to figure this out but uh, finally we got it uh, we got it nail, nailed down uh, you need to remove the two bolts for the two engine mounts up front from the engine bay one is located on the driver side and one is located on the passenger side Remove those two bolts that gives you a little more room to move the engine around back and forth and then right and left. And basically after, after you remove those two bolts holding the engine mount on the top, all you have to do is this. Make sure you put your prey bar in a you know, really good location here and just shift your engine to the passenger side. You just need to move the engine to the right side and that will give you a little more room to drop this down. So if you watch here in this area, watch how this engine with the oil pan shifts that side. See, that's all you have to do. And that little bit is all you need to get that um, career assembly out. I'm gonna, I need, the camera's man help to do this for him to hold this so as I mentioned I'm gonna need the camera's man help to help me with this I want him to hold this pre bar push it that side so the engine moves to the passenger side a little bit and as you can see how this room if you, if you get closer here to me and you just point there, look at the much room that I get. See, this is all I need here to be able to drop this. So we're going to pause. I'm going to get his help here. Um, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to record this part, but you guys get the idea. Remember, remove the bolts holding the engine mounts on the top, both sides, on the right side and left side. That will give you a little more room to start shifting the engine to the right and left. You're going to need that in order to drop this. Remember these things the dealer don't tell you. Yeah, it does take a while to figure out and it does... Uh, um, we find out at the end the hard way, but at the end we know what to do. Okay, so we finally got it out. Again, I'm gonna show you guys, engine cradle is still intact. We did not remove it. All we did, remove the engine mounts from, from the top. We just kind of loosened them up. We just removed the bolts so they're, they can move right and left. And then, um, that's pretty much all we did. A uh, little leverage 
to give us more space here by pushing the engine on the right side and uh, we're in business uh, let me show you this is the old one and we're gonna go ahead and uh, put this uh, new one in uh, the way the way we're gonna put the new one in uh, let's just assume this is a new one we're gonna go just like this we're gonna point this like that and start pushing and then as we push you know lift it up and then uh, that's it it's gonna it's not easy guys I just gotta give you a heads up you definitely have to have someone with you to help you help you with this um, it's not gonna be an easy task to do by yourself unless you really have some good ideas other than what I have tried already um, I'm not gonna show you the reverse order of this. Everything that I've done, uh, just do it in a reverse to put everything back. And uh, that's it, folks. We'll see you next time.